in your opening statement. Chairwoman Mace, M Ranking Member Brown, and members of the committee and subcommittee, thank you for inviting me to offer comments at today's hearing. My name is Paul Locke. I'm a professor in the Department of Environmental Health and Engineering at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I'm an attorney and an environmental health scientist, and a substantial portion of my work has concentrated on the uses of non-animal methodologies in research and regulatory decision making, with an emphasis on the promise that these methods have for both reducing animal use and improving evidence-based decision making. I want to state for the record that uh, the opinions here that I offer are my own, and they do, they do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of the Johns Hopkins University or the Johns Hopkins Health System. Today I want to cover three major points. First, um, the scientific questions facing us increasingly call into question our reliance on animal models and demand that we move forward with more human-centric science. Second, federal agencies must play a leadership role in this transition to these new human-centric models. And third, the development and deployment of these models represent innovation and in places where U.S. businesses and scientists are and must continue to be at the cutting edge. Let's start with a discussion about scientific methods and needs. The complex scientific challenges that we now face require that we move away from traditional animal models and embrace new technologies that do not involve animals but instead incorporate human biology. These technologies include small engineered systems such as organs on a chip and microphysiological systems or three-dimensional groups of cells such as organoids that mimic many of the important functions of human organs. I would also include AI in this group. Now, while there's considerable enthusiasm around the promise of these new methodologies, unless federal agencies and departments support their development and recognize their promise, they will never be able to reach their full potential. <clears throat> We're not going to be able to replace animals in biomedical research with the meager investments that federal agencies are now making. EPA, FDA, and NIH all have important roles to play in unlocking the potential that these technologies have for designing better drugs, protecting the environment, and improving health. Based on our research, there are currently major gra gaps in the frameworks needed to support new methodologies, and it's imperative that the federal government step forward. The federal approach has been passive and reactive. What we need is for federal agencies and departments to lead efforts to develop and implement and use these methods. And my written testimony goes into greater information about what federal agencies can be doing, and I hope we'll have some questions on that as well. Finally, the U.S. must continue to lead the way in these technologies so that we are setting the global standards in these fields rather than following other nations. Regulatory agencies worldwide look to us for leadership, and if the U.S. leads in alternatives methods development and validation, our standards will shape international regulations, assist in the creation of U.S. high-tech jobs, and strengthen our national economic growth. So to summarize, scientific advancements have created multiple opportunities for us to develop and deploy more human-centric techniques in toxicology and biomedical research and transition away from animals and biomedical research. Championing these non-animal models is a win-win situation because we can reduce the number of animals used as well as produce data that is more relevant to human health. Federal agencies and departments must play a central role, and they have already begun to do so. However, to realize the full potential that this transition holds, our agencies and departments must do more, including dedicating additional resources and leading in efforts to validate these innovative new technologies. We cannot be world leaders given the meager resources that are now available. These markets are expanding rapidly, and several American companies are well positioned for success in this market space once the regulatory environment and framework is open for them. In closing, I urge the subcommittee to work with federal agencies to further develop the criteria for validation and acceptance of these new technologies within each department and in a coordinated way across multiple agencies, as well as dedicate additional resources to them. Doing so will allow us to reduce the number of animals in research better informed decision making, and advance American entrepreneurial science. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Locke. I now recognize Ms. Baker.